We shall catch some fish, Mikhailovich. Yes! In winter, to get here, one needs a powerful cross-country vehicle and a good deal of optimism. Without it, fishing turns into a hard labor. Our guide Mikhailovich, a local hunter and a connoisseur of taiga, is fairly undemanding. He is quite happy just with the best. That's why he invited us to go fishing as far as to the famous river of Suvatikon in North Buryatia. Here we find ourselves in a totally different world. It's not lost, but seems ideal for grailing, the tasty Siberian fish hunters. Someone joked that fishing is the best way to justify drinking early in the morning. That's the tradition. We clean cups with vodka and start getting ready for the journey. Barguzin woodsman's inability to live an idle life doing nothing is called fishing. For some of them it's just a sport, others always manage to catch something. Our heroes belong to the second category as they are rarely unlucky. To my question why they are going up to the mountains again, they don't give a clear answer. They just want it, period. The small clean rivers of the western slopes of the Ikat mountains, the Ina, the Turokcha, the Subotikon, the Arealtan and the Argada are the magnet for local fishermen. On a frosty February morning we set out for a fishing expedition. It takes us 40 minutes on the ice of the Ina river to get to its biggest efflux by Anatoly's snowmobile. Anatoly knows the road very well, as his new hunting site is located up the river. Following the curves of the mountains, the river winds, that's why we go part of our way through the forest. The first stretch met us with thick ice and a penetrating wind. Mihalic started to chip the one and a half meter thick ice with special persistence. Every place is associated with certain memories. Seven years ago on this stretch Mihalic caught an eight kilogram timon. From then on he always stops at this place in any weather. These February coats of ice are spread all along the river and make some places useless for fishing. It's much harder now to search for fish. So we have to patiently search the river, checking the width of its ice and the depth of water in different places. Sometimes the holes turn out to be right over stones on the bottom. Then, without any hope for a successful outcome, we have to do the same job once again. There is no limit of the fishermen's patience. If their wives could see them having a hard time picking the river ice, spending hours waiting for fish to bite, getting chilled to the bone, going home empty-handed and still feeling themselves the happiest men in the world. On the following stretch of water, we opened old water holes and made some new ones. Despite fish was about to start biting, as we hoped, we decided to leave this place and move farther up the river. But the farther we moved along the river, the gloomier the landscape was. Our first problem was the snowmobile. One of the ski spring plates had broken down. Igor, a city of Irkutsk dweller and an experienced fisherman, was quite surprised at how quickly it was fixed. Twenty minutes later we carried on our journey. The valley was nearing on, more often we came across ice-covered empty spaces and fresh coats of ice, and the snow level was getting higher. Our 
our heroes don't think that the catching process is the most important thing in fishing. The spirit of adventure, the passion of searching, the feeling of novelty are more important for them. He is not a fisherman that denies himself the pleasure of communicating with the river, steering for hours down at the ice hole. And of course, he is not a fisherman that doesn't like to make those holes. A small stretch called Torosipi is our last stopping point where we try to fish before going back to the middle parts of the Suotikan. At times the wind was getting stronger and it started snowing, but it didn't stop us from searching. Having left our footmarks near a dozen of Swatikan holes, we paid attention to a wide ridge with puffed ice hillocks on it. The place was lovely and we decided to stop there. Having measured the depth in the hole, which turned out enough, Mihalic at last got his first grayling. A bit later, he got one more fish, which was the last one there. Having let the small fish go, on the advice of Anatoly, we went to one of the wintering fish ponds down the river. Fortune favors persistent fishermen. After the first successful biting, we cheered up, and then our business went on much better. The best bait for the local fish is the delicious freshwater shrimp, which in the Baikal region is called bormash. The satisfied river grayling doesn't eat it unless it is cooked. So we have to cook it beforehand over a campfire and then deliver it with special equipment straight to the grayling's table, the stony river bottom. The bait works perfectly. All the river bottom inhabitants come to taste the exotic Barguzin Lakes dish. And at this exact moment, the fisherman starts to indulge in his passion for nature with the rod in his hands. The active biting will last as long as the mad shoal chases the tasty product carried away by the river stream. I tasted cooked bormash and can say that the local fish knows tasty food when it sees it. It is something like halibut or crab meat and tastes like a good restaurant prawn. Its color is even brighter, it's orange-red. If you fish in the same place all day, you should feed the fish every three or four hours. With bormash and fish under the ice, Biting does not slacken, but it largely depends on the weather and the time of day. As before, Barguzin fishermen make their fishing flies out of different materials they have at hand – wool, fabric, threads and even curly human hair. Flies with pubic female hairs are especially popular among grayling. The fish hits such flies, swallows them right away, and it's hooked. Their technology is kept a secret of, and I was asked not to give it away. I can just hint that the donor lady should be blonde, and the fishing should take place in the daytime. As Anatoly had thought, in the afternoon the weather worsened, and the biting became less frequent. Some new holes and poles stirring improved the situation and a dozen more grayling appeared on the ice. 
During the winter time, a fisherman makes an average of 200 holes in a meter thick ice. Once Mihalic calculated that the overall depth of ice that he had cut in his entire life was 40 kilometers, which was equal to the distance between the Subotikan and his home in Jubilini. Looking at the fishermen through the viewfinder, I couldn't keep from thinking that every one of them had his own approach to the process. Mikhalic prefers to sit and manages to catch fish even with his back to the hole. Anatoly can stand all day on his knees with his nose nearly touching the water. Igor usually sits on his heels or pronates, but springs up every time after a successful biting. They are right saying that all fishermen speak one language, but keep silent differently. Everyone follows his own style and manages to keep an eye on his colleagues. The weather improved by the evening and the fishing process became more interesting and hazardous. Such fishing is unforgettable and the joy of it just makes the initial attraction to the mountain rivers stronger. And it's not a shame to show such fishing to people. Everyone knows that the biggest of the caught fish always come off a hook. We can endlessly make jokes and fun of fishermen. That is not typical of our heroes, but the table stories of many fishermen increase the amount of the caught fish minimum twice and its weight three times, and all of them contain such a big number of details that one can be really surprised at fishermen's ability to remember what has never taken place. The hazard of catching is a special state that cannot be shown in the film. The primitive odor that runs in human blood, as the reminder of the past, manifests itself in fishing even more than in hunting. A bystander of this most ancient human activity is bound to notice the enthusiasm, nearly an ecstasy, in which fade away the bounds of time and there is no place left for thoughts. That's the secret of the fisherman's patience and passion. After stirring the bottom with a pole, the grayling's activity rises and they start to bite better, attracted by the mass raised from the bottom. This method, often called Zabormashovka, is universally used in grayling fishing in the Baikal region. By the evening, Peace and silence settled over the Suvutikan. They were broken just by the sounds of the three fishermen who had forgotten where they were and what was going on. Chained to their magic holes, they could look at them till the end of time if it hadn't been for the cold and hunger that had already made themselves felt. <laughs> Halic has recently set sort of a record for patience in Baikal that could be registered into the Guinness Book of Records. He stayed in his snow-covered tent on the Barguzin Bay ice for 20 days and caught only 30 omels during that time. Who else besides a keen fisherman is capable of it? But besides patience, a special intuition is needed in fishing as well. That's what Igor can boast of. He has become a legend as the most successful spoonbait fisherman at Baikal. 
I witnessed how a fisherman, who believed in the supernatural power of his belongings, exchanged their places, spinning reels, waistcoats and even caps with Igor, but that didn't change the situation. Igor was still the only lucky one among them, while the others, who used the same tackle, were just staring at him, unable to understand what was going on. Before going to the hunter's hut, Mikhalich fed the fish again. A double serving of Bormarsh was sent to the stony river bottom. Attracted by so much food, the grayling is likely to stay there until morning. This day was enough to compare fantasies with the Suvatican reality. There is fish, but you cannot catch it under the ice without the special knowledge of the river. We have made 27 new holes and opened 7 old ones, covered the overall distance of 60 kilometers, burnt a can of petrol, spent 3 kilograms of bormash, lost 3 flies, broke the snowmobile spring and blunted a new drill knife. In exchange, we got one and a half sacks of select rail grailing and unforgettable impressions. In the measured and slow life of a Baikal woodsman, a hunter's hut is a second home. Here he gets some rest from his day activities and in long winter evenings gets his feelings up from the bottom of his soul, thinking of his family, friends and enemies. And as a result he leaves an ineffaceable mark of his essence on everything he touches. That's probably why we are more inclined to watch the forest houses than enter them, listen to hunters than talk ourselves and do not want to know more than it will be set near the campfire. Having had a strong tea in the morning, I keep on my video observation. The frosty night has frozen our snowmobile and we have to warm it with a blowpipe. That's a usual morning procedure, so necessary for Russian vehicles in the winter, that permits to start a car in 5 or 10 minutes. It's surprising, but no one seems to be scared of the proximity of the fuel tank. Here, no one seems to take life seriously. Mihalich jokes that it is because no one has ever managed to survive it. Our snowmobile gets going ejecting clouds of smoke. It's a cold Suvatican February morning. At night the temperature was minus 20 degrees centigrade, at dawn 25, but after that it started to rise. About an hour after our arrival it was possible to fish with mittens off. The grayling were still under the holes that had frozen during the night. The hungry fish was not concerned about the design of the baits, that's why we decided not to change them. The golden fish started to come up from under the water. Yeah. 
When the biting dropped, Nikolai took up the pole and Mihalich got the Bormash pot. The contact with fish during winter fishing is more perceptible due to the mediation of the rod and reel. Besides, all that is going on under the ice can be observed like on screen, and that action leaves just a few people indifferent. Despite the grayling is as nimble a fish as the trout, it is a homestay type and in the winter doesn't move outside one stretch. This is also typical of the slow Goldilocks. As the fishermen know this peculiarity, they make new holes just some meters away from the old ones, which surprises beginners a lot. Fishing fortune doesn't follow Mihalich, Anatoly and Igor only when they sit at the campfire or lie in bed. Then they tell stories of the past and there is no end of their talking. Every one of them has something to share with others. The three of them are greatly experienced and respected by their countrymen. Even people from neighboring regions of Buryatia come to Mihalich for advice. As far as I remember, he always says to people, don't destroy what you love most of all and find in yourself to overcome the fear of your dreams coming to life. After a talk with Mihalich, there is always something to think about. The population of river and lake railing is very vulnerable and intensive fishing causes the decrease in their number and the size of the fish. It was nearly destroyed 30 years ago by geologists and lumberjacks. Now the Svotikan grayling population is stable and is reaching the past levels. The fact that the region is difficult to reach helps the process a lot. But the sad thing is, there are less and less places in the Baikal region where one can fish like that. The possibilities of such rivers are often underestimated. But it's such small rivers, which are often not even on the map, that offer great opportunities for fishing. Last year a local fisherman got seven bags of grayling for three days of fishing on this reach. Still the most interesting question is what all that numerous fish feeds on in the low water stretch. Usually for feeding, the grayling chooses open, low-water stretches with pebble bottoms between rapids and shallows in holes protected by shelters. Out of the depth, it watches what is going on around and searches for something that looks like food. The usual grayling's fare is small bottom organisms like river crabs, mollusks and different kinds of water insects. But at times, it doesn't mind tasting their imitation, fishermen's flies, and hits them. By the afternoon, fish almost stops biting and Anatoly took us to other places down the river.
As it turned out, many stretches had frozen down to the bottom. So no one knows where the river flows. Having blunted the last ice drill knives, which didn't make us sad, we came back. Miracles do happen. Waving its tail, one of the most widespread kind of fish of the northern hemisphere was in our water holes again. The last hours of that evening, the fishermen, who tried not to pay attention to me, spent so as if their activity was not to ever end. Our heroes managed to show us one of the most interesting moments of Baikal fishermen's life without any theatricality in a simple and natural way. The film reveals the continuity of Siberian traditions. This film is unique because you cannot repeat the real events that took place in it as you cannot live one day twice. Having justly divided our two-day fish between all the participants of our expedition, Mikhalich noted that all good fishermen once used to be bad. Experience is what one gets with years. The mountains gradually plunged into darkness, and one more long February night came. Then there was morning, and then another sunny day, the major part of which we spent on the snowmobile or others' reaches, making more water holes and getting more fish. Closer to the evening it was finally said, enough. Going back home with baggage of unforgettable impressions, you get to understand that every hunting or fishing expedition is like an iceberg whose biggest part is covered under the water. That unknown part attracts the soul of the traveler towards his destiny. And all difficulties and unknown obstacles that he meets just make him stronger on his way to the desired aim. Our little expedition has come to its end. The three days on the river that can hardly be found on the map of the North Baikal region are over. The three bags of the royal fish given to us by the Suvotikan is a great reward for the efforts of the fishermen. However, I would like to remind the spectators that sometimes fishermen are out of luck and have to come back home empty-handed. But not Mikhalich.